previously on the Burner Saga. Why would Frost Trail's chieftain put a madman in charge of his guards? That's what he told you? He never put Ikko in charge. Soon as those gates were shut, Ikko walked into the Great Hall and sliced open the chieftain like Narwhal. Can't say I'm too surprised. This whole place is a death trap. Where can we go? Wimto's the only thing that makes sense across the wastes. I might know someone there who can help us. Rook, we're good friends. What happened? You tried to kill us. You can't trust me, I know that. Take me and my men as prisoners if that's what it takes. We need fighters. You fight for everyone now, not just yourselves. You do us a greater honor than I had hoped, Rook. You will have no trouble from us. I may be reckless, but I pay my debts. Hello guys and welcome. My name is Cetherion and today we're gonna play the next part of the Banner Saga. We are with Rook, Ivor and their gang. And as I remember, we left Frostfell because we got a new destination. We need to go to Winter. One situation that worries me though is that um, we let Ikil, the crazy eye, join us, so... Let's just hope that he will stay quiet and loyal to us from now on. But to be honest, I don't think so. Alright, so without further delay, let's see how the story goes and what kind of troubles and adventures we're gonna get. Several people have noticed black vultures circling above the caravan, taking advantage of the light snowfall. They pose no threat, but they have a visible impact on the mood of your clansmen. The next time you look back, Odleif is firing arrows into the air, which nearly tag the birds on or to eyes. Get lost. No dead down here. She shouts to nobody in particular. Okay, I don't know why Odleif is annoyed with the birds, but let's just say... What are you doing? What does it look like, Rook? Target practice. She fires another arrow and a vulture shudders and falls out of the sky with a blue feathered arrow protruding from it. She recovers the bird, laughing, inspecting its feathers. You know... Says Odleif, scanning the caravan. A lot of these women, they could do this. You can tell from the look in her eyes she's exciting about the idea. I think I'm going to start training them how to fight. She says. Well, I think that is a good idea, because the more we are, the stronger we can be. So, let's encourage Odleif to train the women. We can always use more fighters, you tell Odleif. If Alet is any proof you know how to train someone with a bow. Odleif gives you a smile. She heads off to some of the women in the caravan, showing them the vultures is shot down. Hmm, okay. So let's just hope that we're gonna get more fighters with the toys that we made. And let's hope that the wastes are gonna be end soon, because we started running low on our food supplies, and that worries me. A flurry of snowfall seems to come out of nowhere and quickly thickens until you're unable to see the man in front of you. You shout out a complete halt, but the screaming winds drone out the sound. A day passes before the blizzard abates and clansmen start to reappear from the snow drifts. It quickly becomes apparent that not everybody is where you last saw them, and a quick search of the area is not enough to recover all the missing clansmen. So as I see we have five choices here. The first one is make a thorough search for lost clansmen. The second one ask volunteers to scout the immediate area. Make a bonfire and wait for missing members to return, move on saying a blessing for the lost, or commit to an hour more searching before departing. Okay, you know what, I'm gonna make a thorough search for lost clansmen and let's hope that we can find them. It takes time to establish proper search teams, but you devise a way to quickly cover as much ground as possible. After a full day of searching, you find many survivors, but your successes are dampened by a number of frozen bodies and others who have simply vanished. Disherded, you return to travel. Well, at least we found the most of them. And I guess whatever I chose, the loss from the people will never change. A scout returns with a nearly frozen child. I almost stepped on her in the snow. 
Looks like she must have been running from something, he says. Patches of blue model her pale skin, but her chest rises and falls ever so slightly. Even just getting her along could kill her in a state like this, says a woman. We could be in danger here, points out another. Okay, all the events are hard for the moment that we begin this part. It's like a trial, so we got three choices. Keep moving, but let the heroes, healers tend to her, stop the caravan for rest and tend to the girl, or stop and look for other survivors. As you see from live screen, I think we're almost there to win so, so I think we should keep moving and hope that the healers can help her. I know maybe it's a bad decision, but we need to reach our destination and I guess we can help this girl there, if she survived this, of course. Fighters stay alert for any threat while the caravan moves on. The healers wrap the girl's arms and legs under blankets to no avail. An hour later one healer approaches you with tears in her eyes. Oh god. She says nothing, always shakes her head. I had a bad feeling about this. But even if I chose to stop the caravan for a rest and tend to the girl, the fate will be the same, I guess. Wormtow was never the kind of place someone would build a town. Fittingly, the Var living here aren't known for welcoming visitors with open arms. The Var find you before you see them, not surprising with these many people behind you. With weapons drawn, they demand to know why you're here, but back down when Ivor tells them he's come to see someone named Krumer. Well, I'll be damned. Krumer, it's been a long time. Yeah, it has. So what brings Edvard to Wimto with his very own village of humans? Bad news. Dirt are coming down from the north. We barely made it this far. That is starting, yes. Come on, we have food. We will discuss more in the Midhouse. As you follow the old Varl into their meager town, you catch him quietly saying, If it were anyone else. I have talked with the warriors here. I will be honest with you. Half want to go north and find out what happened at Blood's Park. Something we should go to grow him instead. None of them are happy you're here. What do you think? If I had it my way, I would stay here and let the dreads come. But you made this a problem, didn't you? We can't feed this many people for long even if they don't eat much. This is a vault town. Most of us take care of ourselves. You've got women, children. We could pitch in, make this place livable. It doesn't work like that. These fall are here to get away from civilization, not make one. It's Groom's call. It won't be long before dreads are here too. No, it won't. If there's one thing we should do, it's tell Torrens what's going on. Who's Jorundr? Varl King. Well, as close to one as we have. Igvar, where will you find these people? Stay here and rest. But once yours are ready to go, we do. I'm going to see all those who want to head north. But I will join you to Grovheim. More travel? No, we've already come so far. Stop the pouting, girly. Even if Dorand won't listen to a tired old Varl like me, I have a feeling they will pay attention to your friend Ingvar here. The listen to Ivar? Ha! He hasn't told you? Of course he hasn't. Do what you need to, but don't be long. So, everything's going great. Uh, we're unwelcomed here. I don't have points to spend for food. So the only option that I got is to talk to Krumr guy before we go, yeah. Krumr, can you spare a moment? Mostly no, but I will try. I never had a moment to thank you for your hospitality. Consider it done, then. How did you get all these foul to follow you? Respect, young one. 
After the Second Great War, wasn't much for me left to do. So I started training other Vault to fight. But got tired of that. Made a place in Winto. They still come calling, even with no wars to speak of. Seems like that might be changing though, don't it? So, who is Ingvar? Ha, huh. I'm not surprised he never told you. I'm just surprised he can stand being around anyone at all. Your friend was one of us long ago. I mean the dreads passing type. He was called Ingvar then. And if you want to know why he changed his name, best ask him yourself. I'm too old to peddle and gossip. Any wisdom on fighting dreads? Depends how much you know. They are all armor. Tap them hard enough though and it will solder. Line up a whole row of slack and they will explode on its other all the way down. You get in a big bro, have your time spent setting them up for it. And if you see one bang his axe like a tannic fork, try to kill him quick. Sometimes the slack he's calling won't even sew up. I bet you have some incredible stories. I might, I might. Or I could be the most boring Val you ever met. Depends on how much you like killing dreads. Ask me again someday. Might tell you about the time we filled the dead yolks with whale teeth. And why. Well, I best leave you to your business. I suppose you should. Take care, friend of Ingvar. Alright, now, let us rest so we can have a good morale and let's go. Grofheim squired a few days out, says Krumur, but nothing worse than crossing the wastes, I imagine. If there's anywhere you might be safe from dreads, it's there. You steal yourself for another long march, and half the town of Winto joins you. Okay, now we have 62 vaults and 20 supplies, but that is all for 11 days, damn it. Anyway, let's see how that will go. Right. A gone man and woman approach the caravan, hands held high. A word, friends, the man says. We are poor farmers down on our luck. The woman hits him and says. We're outlaws, plain and simple. Ten of us and we'll help you in a fight for some food up front. So outlaws, huh? Um, let's ask them about what are your crimes. Yeah. Misunderstandings, the man says. Main houses are confusing. Never know when you're drunk, you sir. The woman hits him again and says. We've stolen, killed a few when we had to. Skills that might benefit you out here. Well, if any, if I'm really curious to see what will might happen to have outlaws on our army, I think I got too many and I can't afford more people with so low food supplies, so... Sorry, but I will send them away. We are so much more than... The man stops as the woman glares at him. He notes and they shuffle away quietly. It takes until can be said to notice that a few of your supplies have gone missing. Oh great, another great news, huh? Uh, so we lost 5 supplies and now we have 10 days and actually 9 days left before we, uh, before the starvation comes. So we need to find food on our journey or we need to battle so we can get points to spend it for food supplies in the nearest village. If of course we're lucky on our path. You haven't seen Alette for much of the day. When you do find her, she returning to camp alone from a fair distance away looking rather sullen. She keeps her eyes on the ground as he approaches. Oh, my girl is in trouble, so... Let's sit quietly beside her. I feel like things are changing so quickly. She eventually confides. It's not just that. Everything is going so wrong. 
I've been talking to Ikil a lot. This gets your attention. What? Okay, what has been telling you? Let's just ask that. Oh god, I'm worried now. He told me how he and Onef are kin. Ikil had a sister who married Onef, but she died a long time ago. They've been bound since, but then Onef left without him. Just left him behind without a word. That's why he came after us. Well, I don't know if I have to believe Ikil's confession, because you never know if that is a trap or a plan to get close to us, but Ikil should come to me if he have a problem, and on my daughter. So let's just say to Alet, don't trust that man. I don't, says Alet. I'm not stupid, you know. I don't go alone. I always bring Odleif with me. She stalks off back to come. At least with Odleif there, you feel a little better about things. Yeah, but I have to find some time to go and talk to Ikil, because I don't trust him and I think I made a mistake to let him join us, so... The Godstone of Marek looms into view. Upon it carved a great ocean beast, ducked stones dug out of the snow like shark fins. It's hard to imagine the north felling wastes being filled with water at one time, but the Godstone stands as a reminder of the vast lake it used to look across. A blessing, said one of the men in your caravan, holding up what looks like a silver coin. It's a fish scale, he says, pointing out the rainbow pattern that shows in the sunlight. Soon a curious child has found another hiding in the snow, and then a third is discovered. Perhaps they will bring us luck. You over here, and before long the caravan has become obsessed with gathering the signing scales. Okay, I think I shall give them some time, because uh, we have been through a lot lately, so let us rest a little bit and let the caravan take their time. By the end of the second day, the scavenger hunt still continues unabated, and even you are starting to feel something in the back of your mind, like you need to have one of the skills. You shake it off, uncertain whether to let this continue. Alright, I think we stayed too much to this magic place and we need to get out of here before it's late, so get the caravan out of here, fast, come on. You start to wonder if something unnatural has a hold on their minds when the call to leave is met with open aggression. Ivor helps you get them moving again and you wonder how long they will have kept searching if you let them. Oh god, I was too close to do my soul for staying there just a while. At least the good thing is that I had a second tent before all was too late and thanks to Ivor for the help to make our people move from there. Odleif calls you over, grinning. A row of women holding bows of differing age and experience line up before a row of trees in the distance. They fire, doing an impressive job of hitting the trunks. I think they're ready to fill some dredge with feathers. One woman still hasn't shot her arrow. She stands perfectly still, the others watch. Just as the wind shifts, she lets go, and her arrow flies not into one of the trees, but a snow rabbit that had scared it out from underneath. Dinner. She says, smiling. A group of men from the caravan approach. Listen here, says one. Practice all your want. My wife isn't fighting dreads. The other man agrees in terrors. We don't want to see a battlefield full of dead wives and daughters. Yeah, I get it that you want your beloved one safe, but if in the battlefield we fall, your wives and daughters will be dead too. So we need all the help we can and deal with it. So I encourage Odleif to trade even more archers, cause we need that. To be honest, says Odleif, this was already harder than I expected. I don't know how many more would really take to it, but the more people who can hold their own, the better. The men continue to complain. The women return to come not just as clansmen, but as fighters. <laughs> Alright, okay, we got 25 more fighters. And that's good, that's really good. An old man sits astride an overgrown portion of the trail. You lost? You ask. He attacks the leather strap on his head and says, No, are you? 
He jumps up and shuffles toward the caravan, his tattered clothes revealing no weapons. Well, I have seen better, the old man says, peering into the supply wagons. But I will join you. He stands next to a fighter, throws his spear over his shoulder and puffs up his chest. The fighter grins and the stranger exhales, asking, What are we waiting for? Lead the way! What the fudge, Grandpa? Just tell me who are you and what are you doing up here? Call me Unor, or anything else you like, the old man says. A man goes where he pleases, doesn't he? His stern look is more comical than intimidating, but you stop looking for answers. Okay, I know that we have a lot of mouths to feed, but I really want to have this crazy grandpa with us, so let's say you're welcome to join if you can keep pace. <laughs> keep pace? The old man puffs through his moustache. No fleeter than old Unor. When husbands mind your wives, I'm cursed with a golden tongue, not silver. The caravan enjoys a good laugh as they start moving once again. <laughs> Tim, that crazy dude. At least he's funny, but I bet that he was serious about it. Anyway, now let's just hope that we can find some food soon, because that is the only problem so far. You hear a whistle on the wind and spot a long line of wall far up ahead, heading towards you. Behind them is a swarm of dreads and a trail of bodies leading off into the distance. Get down there! Barks Kroom. Okay, I got the feeling that a battle is coming soon, and that's very good because we need the points to level up our heroes and to feed, of course, our army. But um, first, let's go to our camp. Now, about this Granba, I don't know who he might is and how he survived here in the middle of wastes, but I have the feeling that we can have fun with this elder guy. And who knows, maybe he's something more than he seems. I hope that he's a wizard or something like that, and about the battle, I'm sorry that I stopped here, but I'm trying the episodes of the gameplay to be not too long and to be easy to be viewed, so... The upcoming battle and what else the story in our path can reveal to us, uh, they're gonna be on the next episode, which I can't wait to play. Because uh, if you think about it, we got the crazy eye Ikil, right? And now we got this crazy dude, this crazy old dude. I wonder what will happen if we put them together to know each other. <laughs> also, um, we need to know about Ivor's past, because uh, uh, Krumur named him as Inkvar. Maybe Ivor has a lot to say, or maybe he did a lot of bad things that we, he don't want to say. But who knows? We got a lot of questions, I know that for sure. And I'm curious to see how the story goes on the next episode, so... If you want to see more of this game, let me know by commenting below and leaving a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to support me. Thank you guys so much for watching. So, until next time everybody, take care, bye bye.